let's start off unit three going over the basics of the cell. So why do we even care about cells? Why bother? So when we're looking at cells, we can look at what we call cell theory. And cell theory is made up of just three main parts. One is that the cell is the basic unit of life. Two, everything alive is made up of at least one cell, if not more. And three, that all cells have to come from pre-existing cells. So it tells us about the lineage of things, that it's been a constant change, a constant transition from one cell, creating more, creating more, creating more, creating more. So those are our three main parts that we should be familiar with, that the cells, cell is the basic unit of life. All life that we see around us today began from one cell because cells have to come from a pre-existing one and that anything alive has to be made up of at least one cell. So let's look at how we can organize things from the smallest to the largest. Let's start at the very bottom with the atoms and molecules. These are building blocks for life, but they're not considered to be alive themselves. They're not alive. They're not dead. They're just non-living. They've never been alive. And we can use those atoms and molecules to build the organelles that we find inside uh, com more complicated cells like eukaryotic cells. This is a compartment or a section or a part of a cell that contributes to the overall function of the cell. Individually, the organelle would not be considered to be a living organism, though, because it's just a part. Same thing um, if you wouldn't call your heart you, right? It's a part of you, but it's not all of you. Same thing with the organelle. Finally, we get to number three, which is where we start classifying individual things as living, and that is the cell, the basic unit of life. Level four, going up a level beyond just one cell, we can have a collection of cells called a tissue. Um, a tissue is cells that are very similar. They do, they look the same, they kind of do the same thing, and so they're all helping perform a common function together. And at the top of this list on this slide, we have the organ slash organ system. This is where you take more than one tissue, putting it together to perform a larger, uh, more general common function. So we've worked our way up from atoms and molecules up to the organ slash organ system. But we don't stop there. After we get some organ systems together, we now have an organism. This is an individual that can function alone on its own. So something like you or I would be an organism made up of different organ systems like our cardiovascular system, our lymphatic system, our muscular system, our nervous system, so on and so forth. If we have a collection of organisms all living together in the same species, we have a population. So individuals that are the same species living in the same place at the same time. So that would be something like the population in Boone, right? All the people who live in Boone, they're all homo sapiens, so they're all the same species. They're all living in the same location, defined as the boundaries of the city of Boone, and they're all living the same time, 2020. But if, let's say we wanna expand that, we wanna look at all the living things in Boone, we would look at the community. So all the living things in the same time. So we could look at not just the people in Boone, but also the trees, the dogs, the horses, the insects, right? Anything that's alive, we would consider part of that community. And if we look at and expand that from the living to the non-living components, we get the ecosystem. So we're looking at the humans, the plants, the other animals, the bacteria, but we're also looking at the water, the soil content, the weather, right? the non-living things that are happening or happen to be in the same area that impact the living things. And then lastly, the largest organizational life level is the biosphere, which is basically just Earth, the entire planet. So like we said, According to cell theory, the most basic unit of any organism is the cell. That's what we know from cell theory. It's one of the unifying theories in biology, which is a really big deal. Things like evolution join cell theory's ranks in this category. And like I said, all organisms are made up of one or more cells. 
the cell is the basic unit of life and that all cells have to come from a cell that already exists. And so that's what we see here, right? It's a unifying theme. It's universally accepted by all biologists. So it's a big deal in biology. Um, you're not really going to find anyone who will counteract this. And we've known about cells for a long time. Right? And so we look at, right, if we look at like a mushroom or a plant or a human, we see that there's different types of cells, although they are unified in that they are all types of cells, and that those cells are going to go through a division process, which we'll go into in our next unit, that will give rise to more cells, 